Bob Popik is a leading author and speaker on creative selling strategies. His columns appear in many national trade and business magazines, and his publications on creative selling are read from coast to coast. Bob has been a featured speaker at several Buick announcement meetings, and his company specializes in sales strategies for many of the nation's top retail companies. Here's Bob to show you some interesting ideas for following up Buick leads through relationship marketing. In the car business, sales determine how much money you make. The more Buicks you sell, the bigger your commission checks at the end of the month. To sell more Buicks, you need more customers coming into your dealership to see you personally. Here are some ideas to show you how to increase your sales by turning leads into long-term Buick customers through relationship marketing. Think about this for a minute. As a Buick salesperson, what is the function of your job? You might think to sell Buicks. Simple enough, right? Well, wrong. The function of your job is actually to create and maintain Buick customers. Selling cars is your goal, and to achieve that goal, you must be good at your function, which is where relationship marketing comes into play. Like everything in business, to be good at relationship marketing, you need to start with a plan. Do you think that someone that's in the market to buy a new car would rather buy a car from a stranger or from someone they know? The answer is obvious. If you want to sell more cars and make more money, you need to have a plan to make sure the customers coming into your dealership know you personally. To do that, you need to start with a system for following up leads that works for you. Hey Dick, check this out. This thing even reminds me when I, when I need to call somebody back. And I can enter notes on what people drive, what they were interested in. It's great. <laughs> That's pretty cute. But I think I'll stick with my old 3x5s. <laughs> cute. This is the future. I mean, pretty soon I'll have people lined up outside my door, and you'll, you'll still be playing solitaire with those cards. Yeah, kid. But you've only got about three names in there. I've got ten people that I have to schedule appointments for this morning alone. And three of them I've already sold cars to. Well, if you've already sold them cars, then why are you going to schedule appointments with them? Well, because Jim is probably thinking about trading up. And Pete's daughter is going to college soon. And he'll be wanting to find a used car for her. Well, how do you know this? Well, because Jim bought this car about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And I just read in the paper that he got a wonderful promotion out there where he works. And when Pete bought that Sentry for his wife last year, he told me he couldn't get over how fast his daughter's grown. And he wanted me to call him and talk to, to him about a car for her for graduation. Yeah, but I can there are two common stuff. reasons that salespeople don't have a system to follow up leads. Either they don't want to or they don't know how to. We can give you the tools needed to develop your own system of lead follow-up through relationship marketing. But wanting to do it is totally up to you. Follow the techniques in this video and you'll see results start right away. The system you use though is not as important as your own comfort level with it. If you have the right information and a system that you will use every day, you're well on your way to improving your own sales. To start, you need leads, a list of potential Buick buyers. The first thing you need to do is generate as many leads as you can. Think of all the places that you can find names of potential Buick customers. Now, Buick already supplies your dealership with leads from national advertising, 800 numbers, golf and Olympic promotions. These are people who have already raised their hand and said, hey, I'm interested in a new Buick. Hey, Dick, you want a cup of coffee? Sure. What's this, another game of solitaire? No, I'm just organizing my week's leads. Weeks? You've got more leads than I've got for the entire month. You know, I've got to talk to the sales manager. How am I supposed to sell as many cars as you if I, I only have a quarter of the leads? I don't get all these from Jerry. Most of them I get myself. What do you mean, get yourself? Don't you get your own leads? No, I get all my leads from Jerry. I mean, isn't that what I'm supposed to do? <laughs> Not if you want to make any money. <laughs> well, where'd you get those? Throw darts at the phone book? Mm, some of them. Just kidding. I get them from all kinds of places. Like, like where? What, you want me to give away my trade secrets? <laughs> Come on, I haven't sold a car in three weeks. I need all the help I can get. Okay. Here's one I got from that salesman that left last year. 
I got his list, gave me all of his customers, what they owned, and when they bought it. So I've been calling all of them, introducing myself, telling them that Jim has left, finding out how their car has been, answering any questions they might have. Why go through all that trouble? Well, now they know my name and yeah. number. Yeah, and they call you with all their problems. And two people have already come in and asked for me when they were looking for new cars. And one of them is coming over today to finalize a lease on a Riviera. Well, that's great. But nobody's leaving, so how does that help me? Well, when I retire, I'll give you my file. Oh, what am I going to do in the meantime? Well, just think. How would you find people that were thinking about a new car? Well, I could get leads from the auto show. Or from the service department. You know, I know every time I have a few things wrong with my car, I start thinking about a new one. Good, good. Anything else? I guess I could ask customers for, uh, you know, my past customers for referrals. Keep going. Well, what else is there? Well, you could get a list of the loans that are expiring from the bank. And don't forget those people that you've talked to who didn't buy. Because sooner or you later... You see, buy new it. leads can be found just about anywhere. And with an effective follow-up program, you'll start turning those leads into sales right away. It's just a matter of knowing what to do and wanting to do it. Uh, yeah, I see. Thanks. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Stevens. Yes, Pat down at Rogers Buick. Uh, yes, well, you know, I was calling. I, I understand you called the Buick 800 number. And so I was calling just to see... <laughs> Pat, line two. Uh, Pat, you have yes. Um, well, I was to... I was calling just to see if you were interested in buying a new car today. Well, yes, I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Bye bye. Telephone follow up is essential. The phone is the most efficient tool available to maintain personal contact with your Buick customers. And it's right there in front of you every day. And it allows you to remind the customer that you're ready, willing, and able to work for them. But for telephone follow-up to work, you must have the right attitude and you must have the right atmosphere. You see, without these two elements, you might as well throw your leads in the trash. So when you make your follow-up calls, make sure you've got the right environment. Make your calls from a place where you won't be interrupted, a place that's organized and the information you will need is accessible. Also, do your follow-up calls on a regular basis. Make telephone follow-up as routine as your first cup of coffee. You're not going to sell a car over the phone. If you make all your lead follow-up calls with that in mind, you're going to have a hard time keeping a positive attitude. You see, the goal of telephone follow-up is simply to make and maintain customer contact and to arrange an appointment, a personal meeting with your prospect. Yes. Well, thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, easy on that phone. Look, I've made 15 calls already today and nothing. Every single one's ended up in the trash. In the trash? You never throw away leads. Well, they're not interested. <sighs> Maybe not today, but someday. <sighs> hey, these are all first calls. I know that. <sighs> Do yourself and the phone a favor. Start with the easy ones. Do you know anybody that's close to buying? Well, I've got a couple, but I was saving them for the right moment. <sighs> Always start with the easy ones. If you get an appointment in the first three, then the rest will go much better. Starting each day off right will improve your attitude and your sales. If you've already established a pleasant atmosphere, your next step is to set a pattern of success. If you sold five cars on the first day of the month, you're going to start that month with a winning attitude that will carry right through the month. You want that winning attitude every day. And to have that, you need to start each day and each call with success in mind. How do you do that? Well, by building on each little success, setting an appointment, getting a new batch of leads, or selling a new Buick. Now, one of the secrets to successful telephone follow-up 
is not doing too many calls at once. Save yourself from burnout by making only a limited number of calls each day. Begin by organizing your leads. Make sure you know all there is to know about the person you're calling. For example, have you spoken with them before? When did you last speak? What did you talk about? What do they drive? What are they interested in? Now, make sure all this information is readily available and then rate your leads using either a hot, warm, or cold, or one to 10 system based on how soon you think they will be buying a new car. Then, begin with those you think are the closest to buying. Begin each call with a couple of questions that require a yes or no answer. Questions you are already sure will generate a positive response. Once you've heard yes a few times, you're halfway there. Oh, hello, Mrs. Parker. Dick Harris from Rogers Buick. Can you hear me okay? Good. Do you have a minute? Oh, by the way, how's that grandchild of yours? Of course I remember. Well, he must be walking by now. <laughs> yes. Well, I've got some good news. We just got a white LeSaber in with the Adriatic blue upholstery that you said you've always liked. So I thought if you wanted to come down and take a look at it, of course I'll be here. Uh, what's best for you? Remember, you're not going to sell a car over the phone, so keep your calls on a friendly level. Your goal is to assess your prospect and make an appointment. When you've got a prospect on the phone, you might want to practice multi-level listening. Listen to their timing. If they hesitate, it's likely that they're thinking about what you just said. How is their breathing? Are they drawing a breath to say what's on their mind before you finish the sentence? And pay attention to your own breathing. What does your breathing tell you? Well, your prospect can detect if you're unsure or uneasy about what you're doing. And of course, getting a definite appointment can sometimes be a little tough. I'm glad you're interested in Buick. I'm sure there are other cars you're considering. There are so many good cars in the market right now. Yes, you know, but what I'd really like is to get your opinion on the seats in the new Park Avenue compared to what you've seen so far. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I feel Buick is a great car at a fair price, but even if you don't buy a Buick, your input would be a great help to me. Yes, well, you know, what do you feel are the advantages or the disadvantages? Mm-hmm. Well, would you like to take it for another test drive? Well, sure. <laughs> well, t tomorrow? Tomorrow's fine. Great. I'll see you then. Asking a prospect for their opinion on a particular option or model is a very good idea. You see, people love to give their opinion. And if you listen closely to those opinions, your prospect will tell you exactly what motivates them to buy a car. Asking for help also gives a prospect a feeling of control. Saying, listen, I need your help, carries a great deal of power. Most people are more than willing to help when asked. It's just human nature. Asking for an opinion or for help allows your prospect to feel in control of the situation. And these both work off the same principle. People don't want to be sold a car, they want to buy a car. And your job is to give them that opportunity. As much as you might hate them, answering machines and voicemail are a fact of life, so stop hanging up as soon as you get a recording. The next time you call someone and get an answering machine, leave a message. One of the approaches that has the best results is to leave a short message saying who you are, where you work, and that you have good news for them. People love to get good news, and they'll be more likely to return your call. When they call back, the good news could be maybe a car of a certain color that's just come in or new lease terms or buyer's incentives. Stay away from price on the phone. There are just too many variables for you to accurately give an exact price over the phone. Let your prospect know that. If you have to mention the price, give a ballpark figure. You could say something like it's around 22 or maybe it's between 24 and 25, but be sure to let them know that you would love to give a more accurate figure if they came in and looked at a particular model or package. Sometimes setting an appointment during the first call is just not possible. 
there are times for a variety of reasons that it is best to maybe call back at another time or send a note or maybe both. When you call back, however, make sure that you have some sort of new information to offer. It can even be unrelated to buying a car, which is why your lead card is so important. Make sure you know if your prospect got a promotion, had a new grandchild, or maybe won a golf tournament, or was involved in a community event. Joanne, hi. Yes, Pat down in Rogers Buick. You know, I saw an article in the paper today on how well your fundraising event went. So, you know, I thought since I, I had to call you this week anyways, I'd call today to congratulate you. <laughs> well, yes, that must have been a lot of hard work. Well, you know, I suppose it is a lot like the car business. I never thought of it that way. Well, yeah, we still, have, we still have the gray one. And we also got a new black regal in today that I thought you'd like. Yes, you know, I can imagine with all that you'd be very busy. You know what I can do? I, I can bring it down to you. Oh, no, it's no problem at all. Really, no, I, it's not a problem. Where's your office? Okay. If you're having a hard time getting a prospect to come in, you might want to take the car they're interested in right to them. Pick them up at work and let them drive it around the block on their lunch break. Let them get a feel for the car and how it rides. Point out the special features and answer any questions. The important thing, though, is they get to meet you face to face and you let them see what a great car Buick really is. Probably the single most important thing to remember when following up a lead on the phone is just be yourself. Relax and talk to your prospects as you would a friend. Don't be afraid to joke around a little. Humor is one of the most overlooked tools a salesperson has available. So lighten up once in a while. When you get someone to laugh on the phone, the residual benefits are immeasurable. Remember, anything you do that makes your prospect look forward to meeting or talking to you increases your chances of selling a new Buick. Ending a phone call is just as important as starting one. Never end a conversation without a plan of action. Make sure when you end the call that you and your customer know that you have a definite appointment, you'll be sending a brochure, and you will be calling again on a specific date. The goal, you see, is to actually set an appointment. Get them in to see you personally, and when you do ask for an appointment, don't make the mistake of letting them give you a general time or date. Narrow it down to a definite day and time. And once you've finished a call, jot down a few notes. What did you talk about? What was the level of interest? Which car was he or she interested in? And what was the trade? How soon did you think they would be buying? Anything that might prove useful in your next conversation. Direct mail is another valuable tool that you'll want to have as part of your lead follow-up program. Direct mail has many advantages. It's quick and it lets you reach a large number of people with a minimum of effort. The goal of direct mail is simple, to stay in touch and to get the person you are sending it to to think of you when they're considering a new car purchase and to get the customer to come in to see you personally. Your direct mail pieces don't have to be great literary efforts on expensive paper. A note on a scratch pad, postcard, or personal sized paper is just as effective. And when you write these notes, don't use we. It's not we want you to come in, it's I. I want to meet you. I want to earn your business. I appreciate your past business. The tone of the note, like your telephone calls, should be friendly. What you say in your card or letter is not as important as getting your prospect used to seeing your name again and again. However, there are a couple of simple rules you should adhere to. First, type your card or letter or have it typed for you, or write the note using a new black felt tip pen. Just make sure it looks good on paper. And two, have someone else proofread everything to check spelling and grammar. Three, neatness and legibility do count, so make sure your note looks good. Four, all your correspondence should have a personal touch to it. Avoid anything that might give your letters or notes the appearance of being junk mail. Use a stamp and avoid using a postage meter. You see, 
Envelopes that look like personal mail with a postage stamp are always open first. Metered or bulk mail pieces always come second if they're opened at all. Now, if your dealership provides pre-printed cards or letters, add a handwritten PS to it and make it something of a personal nature, unrelated to car buying. You see, a personal touch is important. You want to remind your prospect who you are, what you sell, and where you work. You want them to know that you're a friend, and you want them to see you when they're ready to buy a new Buick. It wouldn't hurt to staple your business card to your mailings, and this way your prospects have easy access to your name and phone number. Having your picture on your business card can also be a good idea if you include it with a note, and then when you call your prospect, they'll have a mental image of what you look like in person. The secret to creating a master mail list is to not throw out anyone's name, address, or phone number ever. Even if they don't buy from you right then, they'll eventually be in the market again. You see, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And when they do buy, the decision of who to buy it from usually comes first before price. You want to become the only salesperson they know as a friend. Your lead list is going to be your most valuable asset as long as you're in the car business. So keep it up to date to get the best possible use from it. Something else, sending your direct mail first class will help you keep your list current. You see, the post office will return any letters that are undeliverable, thereby letting you know who has moved or passed away. Direct mail works best when it is used in conjunction with some other part of your follow-up program. When you make an appointment over the phone, always send a reminder card. And when you don't make an appointment, you might want to send a thank you note. Thank you for considering Buick. And if you get an answering machine, send a card, then follow it up with another call. Your notes also don't have to be long. It could be a note just to introduce yourself, announce new model arrivals, explaining leasing or financing options, or advising of expanded service hours. The idea here is to get your prospect to think of you as they start thinking about a new Buick. You want your prospects to know who you are, where you work, when you're there, and what you sell. Remember, you can't give lead follow-up just lip service. Sending a pre-printed letter or a gift to a recent Buick buyer is not a follow-up program. You can't just send out a pre-printed postcard commemorating a holiday once in a while to your leads and past customers and think you're doing a great job. It takes a combination of phone contact and direct mail with a personal touch. Lead follow-up works if you do it the right way on a regular basis. And if you do, both you and Buick will remain a step way ahead of the competition. It's sad. Did you know that 82% of the people that buy a new car can't remember the name of the salesperson a year later? You see, it's really up to you. Did you know that on a national average, only 20% of all the leads generated are ever followed up? And that NADA buyer statistics show that 78% of the people that come to a dealership actually buy a car somewhere within a week. Many new leads can come from a satisfied Buick owner. In fact, in many Buick owner families, there could be two other cars in the family, and you can easily ask them if a friend or relative might be looking for a new car. You see, industry statistics show that 15 to 30 percent of the people you meet or contact on the phone know somebody else that's going to buy a new car in the next 60 days. The best time to contact a new Buick owner is just a few hours after they get home with their new car. You can send a note or call to congratulate them and ask if someone they know may also be looking for a new car. Later, you can send a note with service department information, something with the service manager's name, the parts manager's name, and numbers to call along with yours if any questions or problems come up. Call your customer once in a while with answers to commonly asked questions or maybe to remind them about their first oil change. Then, when you ask for a referral, you're asking as their friend. Earlier, we mentioned that almost 80% of the people that leave the lot without buying are never contacted again. 
and many of those people buy somewhere within 48 hours. What you may not realize is that if you contact those people, 33% of them will come back a second time. And if you get those people back just one more time, 67% of them, that's almost two thirds, will buy a car. For various reasons, customers don't always show up for an appointment. When this happens, don't assume the worst. If a customer doesn't show, call them right away to arrange another appointment. When talking to them, let them know that you understand that things can come up and that you would like to see them at a time best for them. If you want to avoid an awkward moment, you could always blame yourself. Tell the person you think you may have made a mistake with the date or the time of the appointment. Your first priority is to reschedule the appointment, and if you can't, be sure to leave the door open. You can't sell to everybody. It's a fact of the business. But when you do lose a sale to your competition, don't rip up your prospect card. Keep that prospect on your master mail list. Send them a note thanking them for considering Buick and let them know you really enjoyed meeting them. Send them information on new models and features. Keep in touch because someday that prospect will be buying another car and you want that car to be from you. Remember, leads are perishable. A hot lead today may be no lead tomorrow. With a well thought out relationship marketing plan, you'll turn those leads into long term customers that you can count on for today's and tomorrow's sales. Don't give up on anyone. Keep in touch with everyone on your lead list until they buy or die. Following up leads is the most important part of selling new Buicks. If you want an above average income, you need to excel in it. It's the most productive way of increasing your Buick sales right away if you know how to do it, you want to do it, and you do it in an effective manner. And it sure beats waiting for that next up at the door. All the car salespeople that make a lot of money have a good follow-up program. And all the car salespeople that have a good lead follow-up program make a lot of money. The next step is up to you. Buick and your dealership help provide the leads. You've got the right car at the right time. And with your own relationship marketing program in just a few minutes a day, you're well on your way to increasing your Buick sales. <music>